Welcome to the fourth lecture in company law. Today we're going into the second unit of the course. In the first unit of the course, I introduced the company to you as an entity and as a vehicle. And then we looked at how the entity will be formed through following formalities under the company ordinance together with the company's registry. And then we saw last week how the company enters into contracts with third parties although the company must always be represented by a human agent. This begins in the fourth lecture, the second unit of the course, and we'll be looking at what is referred to as corporate finance. Corporate finance, as the term uh, indicates, is simply the manner in which the company is financed for its ongoing operations. And we'll look at first at the issue of shares by the company in exchange for payments to the company in the form of cash or an asset or services rendered. And so this it takes place at the creation of the company when transfers are made to the company in exchange for shares to the founding shareholders. And it also takes place throughout the life of the company when the company allots shares to new investors and receives payment for those shares which increase its share of capital. So what we've looked at so far is formation of the company which then creates limited liability because we have a legal person who is then liable for its own debts. And we've looked at the constitutional documents which govern the internal affairs of the company and fill in gaps in the company's ordinance. And then we looked at the powers of the directors to represent the company vis-a-vis -vis third parties. Now we'll be looking at the share capital, which as I've said, is the payment which is made to the company in exchange for certificates evidencing ownership of the company, which are shares of stock. This is an area where some of the concepts that you may see both in cases and in older scholarship, including some of the textbooks on company law, have been eliminated. So first of all, we have the memorandum, which I explained two weeks ago, has been eliminated from the law. And so this is something which you need not think about. And then the object of the company, which can still be incorporated in the Articles of Association, but is no longer required. ultra-virus doctrine, which would invalidate contracts for which the company has no legal capacity to enter into, has also been eliminated. And now uh, we have the Turkand rule, which is a variation of the indoor management rule that we looked at last week, which is part of the area of apparent authority. And the problem is if a company were to have, were to require some sort of internal procedure that was not visible to outsiders in order for the director to have power to represent the company, should we assume that those internal procedures have been complied with unless something suspicious is visible? Or should we, following the formulation of 117 of the company's ordinance, simply assume that the director or directors, depending on how 117 is read, will always have power to represent the company regardless of what is done. So the balance of the Turkand rule, which is, as I said, sometimes referred to as the indoor management rule, is perhaps eliminated in section 117. And so whether this concept, concept has passed into history is still an open question. Par 
our value is something that we have lost and is something we can talk about to a certain extent today. And I ask you, however, not to be too concerned about the exact meaning of par value. I can explain it to you, but the concept is no longer relevant. So struggling with the meaning of par value will not give you a lot of return, although if you understand the concept quickly, it is useful as a comparison to what we now have, which is essentially the true economic value of the shares. So today we'll look at the nature of a share of stock, the share capital, and how that arises, which is through the allocation of shares and the payment for the shares. How shares are transferred, which I'll touch on only briefly because this is a commercial law question that you'll, uh, you'll study in commercial law. And then we'll look at how capital is increased or decreased. We won't spend a lot of time on the decrease in capital because in two weeks we'll be looking at the corporate finance issue of protecting creditors and the decrease of capital is something which concerns the creditors. So the share of stock. Here's an example of a um, certificate and if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see that this certificate is not one share of stock, but represents 56 shares of stock. It's obvious what company is here represented. This is uh, HSBC. And this will indicate 56 shares in HSBC, which is an indication of ownership rights in HSBC. And the share of stock is one of the most interesting types of instruments evidencing property rights that I think you'll ever find in the law. And so I think you'll enjoy thinking about the share of stock uh, as, we, uh, as we examine it. Now, an old uh, case from the early 20th century gives a very good definition of what is a share of stock. So a share is the interest of a shareholder in the company measured by a sum of money. That's less so less true today because that refers to par value, but it is still measured by the actual transfer of money to the company. And this has the purpose of liability. That is, if you were to invest $100 in a company and that company went bankrupt, all of your investment would be lost. And so you would lose $100, which is what you have donated or transferred to that company. But that would be the limit of liability because the debtor uh, would be the company and the creditor would not come to you seeking payment. Right, so it's measured by a sum of money for the purpose of liability in the first place and of interest in the second because the interest you'll receive from your investment in the company will be dividend distributions paid perhaps annually as is customary. And then it also consists of a series of mutual covenants. Now, remember the Articles of Association. The Articles of Association is a contract under seal. It's a contract under seal between the company and all members. One becomes a member by purchasing stock of the company and having one's name registered in the register of members. And so by owning shares of stock, one also becomes a party to the Articles of Association, which is a, a system of mutual promises or covenants. Okay, So in the share of stock, we have the interest of the shareholder, which is a property interest of ownership in the company, which then yields dividends, payments from the company, it, it determines the amount that the investor could lose if the company were to go bankrupt, 
which is the um, which is the limitation of liability, and also it triggers the mutual promises within the company, including those rights and duties which are specified in the company's ordinance, such as voting to remove directors or the ability to vote to put the company into winding up or to allot shares, as we'll discuss later today. So the share of stock is, is in many ways a, a component which can be understood as the basic atom of the company structure. It's a property interest that brings with it a contract interest, and the company rotates on these, and the various members come together linked to the company by these. And this share of stock is a negotiable instrument, so it's designed to be transferred. And every time it's transferred, it brings with it all of these various legal aspects in property and in contract. Shares of stock are very interesting. It's a unique legal device, and that's one of the reasons why the basic structure of this share of stock is the same in every country in the world. It's very difficult to improve on. Now, the rights and duties can be changed. Next week, we'll look at the classes of shares. But that's only a slight variation of the properties of an individual share. But the basic configuration of rights and duties are the same in any country I've looked at. And if you do run into a legal system that has something radically different than you find in Hong Kong, please do let me know.